This is an example of the use of split desktop uh, photo imaging software uh, for purposes of gathering crusher output samples from moving conveyors in an aggregates plant. We're looking at a small plant with two uh, standard crushers and four tertiary crushers. We have a calculated pr product yield for the individual products using the standard theoretical gradations from AgFlow. This is not an AgFlow lesson, this is just an example of how you you can use the split engineering uh, photo analysis software to provide um, the substitute gradations for the standard gradations that come with AgFlow provided by the manufacturer or otherwise uh, acquired. The process starts with uh, gathering information and here's an example of the uh, video for the four and five crusher. And you can see the material on the crusher uh, pretty well represents uh, a clear image of uh, the coarser rock. And you can see there's some variation as you go from uh, slide to slide, which kind of tells you that if you're taking just a, a belt sample, you're taking a bit of a, a chance of determining whether or not you're getting something that's truly representative. Here with a 30 second video, you can take as many samples as, as you pretty much choose. In this case I took three samples. And you can see uh, fairly uh, easily the, uh, the, the um, representation of the uh, material in the original sample and on the crop sample. The sample is cropped after the scale is established, which is the distance between the two different sides of the belt. You can see the the, the delineated uh, image of that same rock. You can see other rocks here and, uh, and here and here and again up here here and here and here's a good example there and there and there's the little rock that's in behind this one so you, you get in the picture of uh, how the software uh, converts the uh, the video image into a still image which then is cropped and then delineated with the software to give you the gradations. The gradations are uh, represented here in summary uh, having been calculated with different fines factors. Fines factors uh, are, are options within the software that allow you to, to tell the software how to recognize the black pixels because the black pixels are either uh, classified as the outlines of the particles or as a part of the fines and, and it's pretty much up to uh, you to subjectively define that either uh, by visual observation or by field sample uh, so you've got an idea of what the percentage should be. In this case uh, we're going to take the uh, 4 and 5 crusher I'm going to take 100% uh, of the, the black to be fines and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring it up here to the, the sample bucket. I'm going to adjust the gradation by pasting from Excel, confirming my selection, and accepting it and turning it on. And as I do that, I'm going to tell it to use the, the field sample. I'm going to go over to crushers number one and two and do the same sort of thing. And I'm going to, in the case of crusher number one and two, I'm going to take a 20%, uh, or 50%, sorry fines factor and I'm going to put it in here because this is a bit finer material than uh, what's going to be in 3 and 4 so I'm going to substitute into the gradation uh, for field data and then I'm going to turn that sample bucket on. When I turn the sample bucket on that means from that point on the uh, gradation that comes out of these crushers is what I represent from the field sample as opposed to what the manufacturer said. In AgFlow, it uh, uh, does not matter what goes into the crusher uh, in terms of uh, what happens to the output. The output is whatever that curve is, and, and, and now it is what I'm putting in for field gradation. I'm going to go to crushers you know, 3 and 4, and here I'm going to pick a 20% factor. And I'm going to substitute it into the sample bucket the same way and turn it on and 
and take a quick look at the screenings, 103 versus 80, and the three quarters, 120 versus 154. Those are the ones that are most significantly different, and we're trying to get this place, the, the operation to be balanced. I'll put the run in, into motion, and we'll then take a, a, a look at what we see. And what we see is this. We see that the screenings now comes in 72 versus 80. It was 103, I think. The, the quarter inch is a little bit off. There's reasons, I'm sure, that uh, we can get into for that. Explain some things about the screens. But what's really impressive is that we're, we're, we're dead on uh, with the three-quarter. Now, the way these piles were measured, uh, the axles were measured uh, we're using a, a truck stopwatch and a loader and uh, the certified scales at, at, at the uh, scale house. So time material into the truck, the difference uh, from the, the empty weight to the loaded weight to times the time converted to tons per hour. Um, th these, uh, uh, th these tons are not uh, theoretical. The measured tons were physically measured. So we've got that. We take a quick look uh, at where you can go from here. Um, Obviously, you could do other testing, uh, more sampling, more data points, the, mo the more valid your information is. And as I said before, if you're just taking seven or eight buckets off of a uh, uh, conveyor belt that have to be then transported to the lab and then split and, and uh, analyzed, and you know, a couple of days later you get the result, or maybe the next day if, you're, you, if you've got priority, you get the result. you got one sample point. Here I took uh, less than... Uh, uh, in combination for all the crushers, less than uh, two minutes of, uh, of video, and analyzed each of them, uh, excluding my initial learning curve, and anal analyzed each of them in, in less than, uh, you know, maybe combined combined time of 30 minutes, uh, less my learning curve, and uh, uh, well, I could have as many samples as I want, and and and, and create as much statistical relevance as is appropriate for my uh, analysis. So anyway, you go on from here. You would then say, okay, my, uh, my gradation information is, is this for crushers 5 and 6. My gradation information for 4 and 5 is here. Uh, does it look right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and you, you do move on to uh, where else is there potential for variability uh, and what can you do within your plan. And a couple of things that uh, we look at is how are the crushers operating. In terms of correlating the output from the, uh, the theoretical to the actual, a lot of things affect that, including the maintenance of the crusher, the wear condition of the crusher, and more importantly than anything, the feeding of the crusher. If you can see here, even though we're only averaging 135 of the 309 um, uh, potential amps for the 250 horsepower motor on this uh, number 5 crusher, uh, we're seeing substantial spiking. Uh, almost 100 amp amperage spikes. So as that's happening, uh, you're probably see seeing, uh, you know, you would be seeing if you could. Anyway, the uh, material is, is, is uh, segregated or, or it's uh, underfed and, and, and the feed is biased so that you're crushing on one area and, and not crushing on another, substantially affecting the overall real capacity of the, uh, of the equipment. The manufacturer presumes that the crusher is properly fed, properly maintained, properly set, and uh, that there is no biasing of the feed, so you know you could have a 250 horsepower or 250 ton per hour theoretical crusher that really only has a capacity of 150 tons an hour if it's not properly fed. If you look at uh, crusher number six, something similar is occurring. It's a bit finer feed in this crusher, that's why it's set finer. There's a biasing, and and this displays it in the opposite direction that it really should, because the coarse material would, would actually flow to the outside and, and the fine material back. It's actually number six that's getting the, the finer feed. You see the amperage is less. The peaks are a little bit less, but there are still peaks, indicating, again, underfed condition or biasing of, of, of feed, again, affecting the, the control of the uh, output. If you can consider a crusher that's set at an inch and a half that has a two and a half inch stroke, if it's underfed, material that flows through or potentially the, the open side could be as much as four inches. Critical when your, your downstream crusher has a maximum top size of three inches. You can see if you go to crusher number one, that it's uh, a much more consistent uh, amperage draw, uh, enough material in it, but still un un underfed to keep these uh, uh, peaks from, from occurring, and, and you've only got a, about a 12 amperage range of variation. Uh, amp amperage for crusher number two is even less, 
Uh, these are these are loads are split by a splitter gate, which may not actually be right at the, the 50 percent. And you can see here that you've got some uneven evenness to the feed. So again, you'd think this one would be underfed and underloaded both. And then we go to crusher three and uh, coarser material um, very low rate of feed comparatively speaking 70 amps out of 300 amps uh, actually it's got a smaller motor, it's only a 200 horsepower motor, so it's 245 amp and, but a very small range, so it's not hurting the crusher but uh, this is indicating a, uh, a feed issue and, uh, and crusher num number four um, 90 amp average <coughs> out of uh, 309, that's a 250 horsepower also um, and you can see the plant shut down. We got a little bit plugged up during this uh, part of the evaluation, but the spiking tells you that the, the, the crusher is underfed. You could easily conclude that you probably don't need all these uh, crushers at the quaternary, um, or not quaternary, the tertiary. Um, probably don't need them both at the uh, uh, secondary, but uh, those are things that are further into the study. This is not a, a ag flow uh, training attempt. This is just an example for how the uh, uh, digital photo imaging uh, can work. So uh, that's my story. Uh, feel free to call with questions if anybody's got any, uh, or check my website, uh, www.coreyengineers.com.